I am going to provide a very simple explanation of neural network without using any heavy mathematics in such a way that even high school student can understand it easily. Let's say there is a group of students who have never seen koala in their life. Koala is a nice cute looking animal from Australia and these students are very naive and they have never seen this animal and our job is to train this group of students so that you give them an image and they will be able to tell you whether this image has koala or not. You can make this a teamwork and give individual responsibility to each of these students such as Mike can work on detecting only eyes, Mohan can work on detecting only nose. So each of these students are working on detecting a specific part of koala's body from an image. The way they give their decision is by using a score of 0 to 1 where 0 means this is definitely not koala's eyes, 0.5 means yeah it looks like koala's eyes I'm not sure maybe 50 50 one means it is definitely koala's eyes once these students are trained and we will look into how exactly you can train them that is also very important part of neural network but that will cover in the later part of the video but for now just assume that these students are trained to detect specific uh, part of koala's body so Mike has become now expert koala eye detector similarly Mohan is an expert koala nose detector when you give them an image of a lion Mike will say the decision is 0 0.03 because the eyes they are like round eyeballs but they don't look like koala's eyes so 0 0.03 similarly for nose he can just give some score and if the score is more than 0.5 we'll say yeah those are koala's eyes or nose you can extend this collaboration further and make Shakib an ear detection expert. And then these three students can go to Serena and Serena can work on deciding if the image has Koala's face or not. So once Mike Mohan and Shakib says that this image has Koala's eyes, nose and ears, Serena can use uh, their work to figure out if the image has koala's face or not and she can use a formula like this because if you look at koala the nose in koala is very prominent koala's nose are very uh, different than other animals so if there is a prominent feature then you can give that more weightage and Serena can derive this formula for detecting the face and based on the scores that Mike Mohan and Sakib gives she will simply use this formula and tell you whether the image has koala's face or not for example in this particular case i have given sample uh, scores by each individual person and serena computes the face score to be 0 0.79 so if anything is more than 0.5 it means it is koala's face similarly if there is lion's image you will see that based on the score the face score will be 0.15 which means it it is remotely looking like koala's face here you can now use rest of the group uh, where they individually for example jyoti can detect legs and Chen can detect tail and they can tell their decision to nidhi whose job is to say whether uh, the image has koala's body or not and finally Serena and Nidhi will go to Sergey who will give the fans final answer and he will also use some kind of formula here I'm giving more weightage to face because when we are working on face detection either humans or animals you know when we are working on detecting whether it has humans or which animal we give more weightage to face so now this group is doing this awesome teamwork and telling you whether the given image is koala's image or not this is nothing but a neural network each individual person here are individual neurons and they are working on a specific subtask and they pass uh, the result of their subtask to the next group so serena and nidhi are actually uh, in terms of neural network they are a hidden layer 
Mike Mohan, etc. They are forming the input or the first layer and Sergey is the output or the last layer. So this is a neural network. It's a trained neural network. Now the most important thing about neural network is how do you train it and how do you detect these features? So just imagine that uh, these students are not trained right now. You put all of them in a classroom and then you supply an image to this uh, classroom and they will initially make a random guess. So Mike will randomly guess whether this image has koala's eyes or not. And similarly, everyone will make a random guess. And finally, Sergey will tell whether this is koala or not. And once Sergey has a decision, he will go out, out of the classroom and there is a supervisor who is standing. The supervisor knows the correct answer. So Sergey will say, hello, sir, this doesn't look like koala. And supervisor will be like, no, you are wrong. This is koala. Sergey then goes back to the classroom and says, hey guys, this is actually koala. What score did you give me? Serena and Nidhi will then go back to rest of the classroom and say, hey, Mike Mohan Sakib, this is actually koala's ears, eyes and nose. You need to be careful next time. So they use this experience of mistake. So basically as a group, they made a mistake and the mistake or the error has been passed from Sergey to Serena Nidhi to the rest of the group. This process is called backward error propagation. So you make a mistake and then you get the feedback that you have made a mistake and you pass this feedback to rest of the group so that they adjust their weights. You can take n number of koalas images and repeat the same process. So the same process is repeated where you make a random guess. Uh, then Sergey goes out and go, uh, tells the supervisor that this is koala or not. The supervisor will tell you if the answer is correct or not. And the error feedback is passed on to the rest of the group. And the group keeps, keeps on adjusting their weights or adjusting their brains in a way that they can finally come up with the right answer. You can be given thousands or 10,000 such koalas images. And after training this group for so many images, eventually the group becomes better at koalas face detection. Initially, it will make a lot of error, but as the time goes, it will keep on improving. Now, how it improves the weights for that, it uses a derivative and some mathematics. And for that, I'm going to link a popular video by 3Blue, One Brown, where he has explained nicely how neural network works. So if you are interested in looking at math, please look at that video. The motivation behind neural networks came uh, from the way human brain works. If you remember those days when as a kid you were trying to learn bicycle, you would initially fall down, then you try again, again fall down, try again, and eventually you master that skill. During those trial and errors, what's happening is our brain has billions and maybe trillions of neurons. And in those neurons, this training process is constantly going on. So there is this error loop or a back propagation feedback that goes inside those tiny neurons. And the weights between those neurons are constantly being adjusted until you get into a situation where you are making minimum amount of mistake. Right now, when you are learning deep learning, actually inside your brain, there is a deep learning going on. Isn't that amazing? If you have little software engineering background and if you reflect on our previous presentation on Koala's image detection, you might argue that this looks more like a distributed computing where each individual person, Mike, Mohan, Serena, etc., are working on a well-defined task and their results are being aggregated at the later stage. And it is okay to think that way. But that is not the most interesting part about neural network. The most fascinating aspect about neural network is the training itself. Imagine that you are not telling each individual student what they should be working on. And these guys, although they are naive, they figure out in a smart way what exact subtask they need to work on or what exact feature they need to work on. That is the most 
interesting part about neural network and there is a mathematics involved uh, behind that which we'll look into it in a later video but in the real life when you are dealing with a complex data sets you do not know what features you are looking at so you just build a neural network which has input layer couple of hidden layers and the output layer and neural network uh, will figure it out for you so each individual neurons are so smart that they will figure out what subtasks uh, they need to work on. All you need to do is you need to give a lot of throat data to it. I hope that clarifies some of the doubts that you had about neural network. If you like this video, please post in a video comment below. That way I get a feedback on the content that I'm producing. In this deep learning tutorial series, I'm going to demystify many different concepts in deep learning world such as convolutional neural network, RNN, activation function and so on and we'll be writing Python code using TensorFlow along with the exercises. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.